So, aber ich möchte jetzt gerne, bevor wir irgendwie nochmal anfangen zu racen, ich möchte gerne nochmal das Video von Nils Naujux gucken, weil der gute Andreas hat gesagt, ich soll mir das angucken. Und zwar hat Nils nämlich rausgebracht, oh, 16 Minuten, 16 Minuten kommt Nils um die Ecke jetzt hier. Was hat Nils denn, also, äh, are you guilty of this mistake? Jetzt bin ich ja mal gespannt. Aber das wird wahrscheinlich nicht nur für ACC Geld, mal gucken. Hey all, just a quick video today before I'll head over to the karting event initiated by Noah Ada and <coughs> done by uh, VCO in Dortmund tonight. Uh, uh, für 650 Euro kriegt ihr übrigens auch uh, für 650 Euro kriegt ihr auch eine Wheelbase bei wem anders. Alongside the Expo. Anyway, what I wanted to show is, is actually a takeaway from all the coachings that I do and there are very typical mistakes that always repeat. So we're just going to look into one of these mistakes today. And that is going to be what I call well, being being lazy or maybe it's not even lazy because you as a driver, you probably also feel, always feel very occupied while driving and not ever lazy, but you might just be happy about that one corner and you're kind of mentally preparing for the next corner. But at the same time, you are forgetting <laughs> that Hey Nils, übrigens, wir haben letztens telefoniert. Ich kann deinen Namen übrigens <lacht> immer noch nicht lesen. Kussi, Kussi. There could actually be something done before the next corner to get you through that one a little quicker. And what I mean is, especially in these corners that we would call connected corners. So where there's very little time and space between two consecutive corners, like here, turn one and two on Nürburgring, or turn three and four or also turn five and six. They are all pretty much corners that are connected and where one corner depends on the other. Or let's say the, the entry of the second corner in a row always depends on the exit of the first corner in such a sequence. Das habe ich übrigens auch von Nils und Niklas gelernt. And what I want to show you is just the lap time difference you'll see when you are lazy in one corner or between the corners you're a bit lazy and not repositioning aggressively and how much there is to gain when you are. So let's warm up the tire a bit and then do a couple flying laps. And excuse me if we're not going for the world record here. Nee, das ist nicht zu excusen. Just while talking, the only guy who can actually handle that is Ellen. Who is going to drive the Pro Series tonight, by the way, so watch that. And we're driving the Essen with the exact same setup that I've just been using recently when sharing the car with uh, Niklas Huben in the Renvelton series. <coughs> just that the car is now 40 kilograms heavier than it is in the series because now everybody's applying custom BOP which is really a great thing coming out of the community here. So slam down the gears right around the 100 meter board, be aggressive in turn one and now we're just going to be a bit lazy here for turn two, okay? So shallow entry into this one because we didn't reposition properly. Have to wait a lot or a long time to go onto the throttle. We do the same thing here again, okay? To the inside. Now we see the corner. Okay, we're happy. Just go straight here a bit. Have to lift now for that corner to still get to the inside. And again, wait a long time for the exit to come and to put the power down. Same thing. Here. Macht ihr das eigentlich auch in eurem Kopf? Also, dass ihr die Kurven in euren Köpfen durchgeht, wo ihr sein müsst und wo ihr hin wollt? Here, get the car in. Slightly wide, but not reposition. Have a shallow entry. Wait a long time to put the power down. And that's already what I want to show you. We're going to have this again in uh, three, four corners. When we go on to the, well, pretty much the back straight here. Where the repositioning or the aggressive repositioning or the not being lazy, whatever you want to call it, is just going to be an important factor for lap time. And there are several tracks where this will apply. We can have a look at uh, Palami afterwards. And now here, we're just going to be happy we got that corner done. Reposition to the middle. And now we have a long time to wait. We're stuck on the inside before we go back onto the power. I might be exaggerating this here a bit, okay? 
you might not do it to this extent, but you will still see those differences when we do the fast lap now afterwards. Ich sag ne 153 hoch. So, let's finish that lap kind of cleanly. Almost the rear stepping out. And we're going to have something of a 40 oh, okay. or 54 low with half a tank and now just be a little more aggressive in our repositioning and the braking for that matter. Got that corner done, but now don't be lazy. Keep positioning, keep positioning. Wider entry into this one. Carry more speed, earlier throttle, much higher exit speed. And do the same thing here again. Just stay to the inside, open up, open up, throw it in. Much shorter lift, much earlier power application, much more exit speed. And you can see how much the delta is already dropping. Follow that principle one more time here. Reposition. Wide entry, probably too wide. But early exit, uh, early power, sorry. Allowing us to carry speed onto the straight. So this is where you see really where the lap time is coming from. Bit deep into this one, we still get it pointed somehow. Of course, yes, the tire is going to be ever so slightly better in the second flyer than the first, but we can ignore the sear. I'm not fully pushing into the tire. I'm just focusing on doing the line and then same thing here just more aggressive repositioning now very much to the outside much more speed much earlier throttle and that is really what everybody means when they tell you in a track guide be early on power but it doesn't help just putting the throttle down you have to be in a position for that actually to be possible and That's that only works always. if you do the positioning correctly and aggressively. And let me finish this up. A little Eine focus Sekunde. here. And that's actually a very decent lap time, I have to say, with 40 kilograms of extra balance compared to what we did uh, the race this week and half a fuel tank. So I had this recorded with the Popa Meta tool running, which you can download yourself as well. It's free to use, free to compare to your own laps, only if you want to compare to a pro or anybody else. There is a paywall, okay? So let's uh, head over to the tool. Yeah, ja, but the thing is, uh, Thompson, the Zeiten, die Nils gerade gefallen ist, sind für Nils langsam. Also lang, langsam in Anführungszeichen. Die sind für dich schnell, für Nils langsam. Wenn Nils die Fresse hält, ist er nochmal wahrscheinlich 300, 400, halbe Sekunde schneller. Wenn ich das im Stream beobachte, jetzt gerade zum Beispiel in Watkins, immer in den Rennen, wo ich ein bisschen mehr rede, bin ich halt eine halbe Sekunde langsamer, weil du dich halt nicht hundertprozentig drauf konzentrieren kannst. Und dann ist es bei mir eine 44 Mitte und du fährst vielleicht eine 145 oder sowas, wenn du nicht quasselst. Und so, so ist das bei vielen Menschen, also viele, viele Dinge passieren automatisch beim Fahren. Also super, super viele Dinge passieren einfach von alleine. Also du könntest quasi, du könntest dich nebenbei wahrscheinlich mit deiner äh, Frau, Kind oder was auch immer unterhalten und du hörst einfach, was das Auto machst und weißt, was gerade passiert. Und je mehr du fährst und je schneller du wirst, desto schneller werden auch deine normalen Zeiten, wenn du andere Sachen machst. Weil dein Körper das einfach unterbewusst ausführt. Weil zum Beispiel, mein liebstes Beispiel ist immer Zähneputzen. Denkt irgendeiner darüber nach, wie Zähneputzen funktioniert bei euch? Das macht, das passiert einfach. Das, das habt ihr so viel und so häufig gemacht, das passiert einfach von ganz alleine. Und so ist beim Rennfahren auch. Und währenddessen sie quatschen und nicht volle Aufmerksamkeit ihrem Körper stecken oder, oder geben, dann verpassen sie vielleicht um einen Meter oder zwei einen Bremspunkt und dann wirst du halt langsamer. Und das ist aber nicht so langsam im Vergleich zu anderen Fahrern, weil deren langsam beim Reden ist halt einfach, sie verpassen es nicht um so viel. And load up the laps. All right, so I've loaded up the both laps now. Um, just quick overview, uh, overview what we're really looking at. We have the track map on the right side where we have all the input data on the left, right? So we have the delta developing between the two laps in terms of time. We see the speed traces, we see the steering traces, we see, see the throttle and brake input can have a look at whether or not TC or ABS are engaging. We can even have a look at how much slip the tires do have. Um, it's a bit of an 
advanced chart you only get with a subscription. We can take a look at the turbo boost of the car um, if there was a different brake bias setting and we can get a good impression of what the differential of the car does, how individual the rear tires are spinning, which is also quite useful for kind of advanced analysis. We will, for this one, only really focus on the line. So the first thing we're gonna look at is turn one and two. So we'll just click on that shortcut here and we're gonna see the speed difference here where you can tell well, this is probably not that much. We can't even see the second line, but we can see huge differences here on track in where the car really was on the right side here. So just to highlight this as good as we possibly can, let's make the, so you see the fast lap is the solid line. The slower lap where I did the wrong line is the bit of a transparent one. Maybe it's too transparent even, right? So this one. So let's just see where the time actually fades away. Let's see for turn one, break point seems very similar. There's a bit of waiting there, trail braking very similar. The downshift has been more aggressive, all good. Not really a time change here in, in turn one, okay? That was just a couple hundreds. But where you see the majority of time drop is coming in is going into turn two here, okay? So coming from the wider line by a gr more aggressively repositioning here between the two corners. And you can see this in the steering column uh, as well, here where I just keep turning more aggressively over there to the uh, to the other side, a little harsher, put the car over to the side and then throw it in from a wider outside position. If we really zoom in, you would be able to tell, well, there's probably a little over a car width between the two cars. So we're, we really made a, a two, three, four meter gain in terms of position um, to enter that corner. And that allows us to carry much more speed into the turn because we're also doing a bigger radius on which the car can drive at a faster speed. And then we just move forward here a bit. You can see all the time gain in this case really is just into the corner and there is not a lot uh, coming on the exit here additionally to that. Der Dude ist einfach, also Nils ist ganz, ganz katastrophal schlimm im positiven Sinne. Der hat das einfach virtuell durchgespielt, das Ding. Also ich weiß nicht, ob er sich im realen Leben damit auch auskennt, so, aber der hat das einfach durchgespielt. Der hat das studiert. Das ist richtig, richtig schlimm. Also falls ihr irgendwann mal eine Stunde nehmt oder so, setzt dich hin, wird wild. Let's just jump to turn three and four and there we really see. Ich meine, das sind jetzt so die, die simplen Sachen, die, die erklärt werden. Aber wenn es dann wirklich so ins Detail geht, was dein Auto macht und äh, mit Differential und Pipapo und dir das erklärt wird, wie das funktioniert und wann das greift und äh, das ist einfach, dann ist alles vorbei. See the same pattern. Green means we are gaining time okay so initially enter entering the corner yes i was a bit more aggressive maybe i gained a tiny bit there too but then the main thing was that i stayed further to the left here okay opening up that right hander being more aggressive in my positioning not being as lazy between the two corners and that alone you'll see is going to cause major differences so on the break there's a difference of two tenths between the cars and you can see even I'm losing a bit of time here because the repositioning, of course, forces me to go a bit slower, to take a bit of a wider line, which means I travel more distance. Of course, that costs a bit of time. So we're losing a couple hundreds here even compared to uh, where we started. But then see where the advantage really starts to kick in. And that's zoom out a little and you can see the green line keeps going and going and going and going. And from those... Uh, Two tenths, we were down entering the corner here, turn four. We are going to gain a little over one and a half tenth just on the straight afterward. And it just keeps climbing. If we keep zooming out, we keep zooming out. You see the delta keeps growing up until the next breaking point. So where you're really losing the time is all this area here, the entire straight. It's the schlimmste curve that it's übrigens gibt auf Nürburgring. Da kann man am meisten Zeit verlieren. After turn four is where you're going to lose a lot of uh, lap time if you are not aggressive in repositioning the car, right? That's why it's so important. It's one of the key tips really to uh, improve your lap times. Let's do the same thing for turn five and six. You can see I've, I've done the same pattern here where we just reposition more aggressively to the outside and really focus on what is important, which is the straight afterwards. And we can see the same thing here 
in the delta chart, just entering the corner quicker because we're coming from a wider position, allowed to drive a wider radius, which means more speed. And if you look at the speed chart, we're, we're five to eight kilometers up here in the corner. And we keep that advantage alive up until the next breaking point, right? It just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. And there is nothing you can do as a driver on the straight. So all important thing is often the exit, which you often get a better one if you, aggress uh, if you reposition more aggressively between the corners. Uh, let's jump a bit further here just to turn 10, 11. And then I've already showed it to you all and I've probably given you not, or I hope I've given you enough evidence. You can kind of repeat that on every track. Barcelona turn one, two, three. Um, it's going to be between four and five, even to some degree, if you're not aggressive there. It's going to be on Kayalami a lot. There's a lot of connected corners there as well. And probably if you think of any other track that doesn't have a long straight between two corners, then probably this will apply. Think of Misano, a lot of corners behind one another, and it's very crucial to focus on the right part of the track and to keep repositioning. Misano. Ich fahre Misano eine Kurve so unendlich schlecht, aber ich bin in Misano nicht so langsam. <lacht> ich habe keine Ahnung, wie man diese Kurve fährt. Ich fahre sie immer noch scheiße. Keep working the car into a better spot on the track that gives you lap time. So, into uh, turn... 10 then here uh, i think i drove as similar as i could here on the brake the speed doesn't differ too much um on the exit okay slight differences there but we're talking a couple hundreds but the main difference again is going to be the repositioning which is more than the full car width that i'm using extra just by being a tiny bit more aggressive there and that again will mean zooming out a bit again that we are carrying more speed into the turn you can see where it really starts to pay off is after kind of the middle of the corner, that's when suddenly our speed and position advantage is going to start playing a role. So we started coming into this section with five and a half tens down, and then we're exiting the section here. And you see the delta keeps climbing and climbing, and then we move further and further and further, and we zoom out and the delta keeps still climbing pretty much until the next breaking point where we are going to be seven and a half tens down, right? So we started at five, five and a half tens down, and suddenly we're talking seven and a half tens down. And that is only the repositioning. So I'm just trying to highlight. Nee, ich, ich denke, die meisten Leute uh, mögen nicht so gerne so viel Theorie, Tobi. How crucial that is, okay? Just never be lazy on the track. Never take your time, never take a breath, so to say. You have to straight to take breath, but between the corners, keep working the car, keep putting yourself in a better position. Um, and then, of course, head over to the website, get a data pack, or there's a couple of groups you can join with a subscription where I recorded, for example, um, laps with the Ferrari on... Uh, all tracks, which will allow you to. Sorry, I'm just loading it up for you to see. Ich finde das, was man halt gerade gut sieht, ist, ähm, ich habe mit, äh, mit Nils ja auch schon drüber gesprochen. Nils ist überhaupt kein Content Creator. Also, das, was Nils gerade macht, so mit diesem, ähm, mit dem Reinladen, währenddessen man ein Video aufnimmt, also ich würde mal sagen, Großteil. Der Content Creator würde das A entweder vorbereiten oder B einfach wegschneiden, weil er weiß, dass das äh, Sachen sind, wo der, Auf, äh, der Zuschauer ein bisschen die Aufmerksamkeit verliert. Also nicht alle, sondern viele. Und man merkt bei, bei, bei Nils das so schön, dass er einfach überhaupt gar nicht in diesem Ding drin ist. Aber ich finde seine Videos trotzdem total geil, weil sie immer Wissen drin haben, egal wann. The team. We just go to the teams list and then you can find that team aggressive preset labs where I have set a lab in the Ferrari on all tracks with aggressive presets. So you have lines for comparison there, or you go for the CD8 data subscription who have, I think, 500, 600 data packs uploaded to our uh, website. So you can compare to what the CDA drivers are doing. Um, then just make sure that to double check, are you doing the right compromises? Are you aggressive enough between the corners and or 
are you throwing lap time away by just being a little too happy if you figured one corner out and then you're not in a good position for the next one. So I hope that's a takeaway of the video. Don't be lazy and then we'll see you very soon. Bye. Oh, er hat mich angezwinkert. Ach, Nils. Well, just a quick... Don't be lazy, Chat. Okay? Don't be lazy. Denken. Ihr müsst mehr denken beim Fahren, Chat. Viel denken. Immer vorbereiten. Die ganze Zeit immer am Ball sein. Immer wach sein. Das Auto muss arbeiten.